come up with what they got to come up with. Yeah, yeah, it is a very good clip. And in fact, we show quite a few clips from Apollo 13 throughout the whole teaming class as we're looking at how the team develops. You know, there's some interesting connections with Apollo 13 where they, they have the four, the three astronauts, and then one of them gets sick, and they have to bring a new one in, and how that changes the team dynamics and the development of the team. And so, yeah, and that's another good clip that we show um, to just in terms of problem solving. There's not a lot of sequence there. There's not a lot, well in that time, obviously, but there's not right. a lot of. In that particular one, it's really good when you've got constrained resources, which is always something we're dealing with, particularly money and time. But, but in that case, this is what is on. It's very. The boundary is there. This is what they have. We can't send them things. They can't send things back. So it's a need to show those specific conditions. Yeah. Anyway. And, and this, in the overall teaming class, um, you know, this is one class session out of the 14 weeks. So we do a lot of other things, and I'd be happy to, to share with you the, the whole syllabus of what we do. We, we go through Myers-Briggs with the students, and they do an activity with that. Um, we, we work on conflict management. Um, just a whole host of team development related topics that, that also connect with the problem that they're trying to solve at the same time. Okay, so we will watch this. I think it's about 20, 25 minutes. Um, I just purchased this from the ABC <laughs> News website. Great I should have looked up the price before I came in here. I don't remember. I'm thinking it was about $20, but it's the uh, IDEO episode or the, um, the deep dive episode if you want to look. That, so, I'm sorry, that, yeah, the DVD has other ones besides this or just this one? Just this one episode. And how long is this? One? About 20, 25 minutes. And how do you find this? What's this DVD called? It's, yeah. it's from ABC News. It's from their Nightline series. And, and it's called? The Deep Dive. Deep Dive. Yeah, so if you just go on their website, Nightline website, and search, you'll find it. So it used to be that you deferred to the boss. Is it the boss is always going to have the best ideas? Here, nimble fingers, alert minds, and tireless machines. And it used to be in most companies that chaos was discouraged. <laughs> this is where the crazies live. This is where we do our work. Skip that. Good morning. Good morning. Good used to be you were supposed to climb the corporate ladder. Status is who comes up with the best ideas, not who's the oldest, not who's, who's been with the company longest, not, not who has that biggest title. You go into a culture and there's a bunch of stiff going around, I can guarantee they're, lo they're not likely to invent anything. You can stack yourself big as big as you want. That's great. Thanks a lot. You had a great time today. Well, forget the way it used to be. Tonight, the deep dive. One company's secret weapon for innovation. A lot further along in this broadcast, near the end as a matter of fact, you will hear one of the central characters suggest that we look around. The only thing that's not designed by anybody, he will say, is nature. Actually, you could say the same thing by observing that the only designs that don't require constant modification are the ones we find in nature. But the point is well taken. From the buildings in which we live and work to the cars we drive or the knives and forks with which we eat, everything we use was designed to create some sort of marriage between form and function. Does it work? And can we make it look interesting or attractive? What is truly amazing is how long we tend to put up with things that may not work particularly well or may look especially unattractive simply because we're accustomed to them and because no one has ever suggested redesigning those things. There's an interesting distinction between design and invention. Whoever came up with the idea of dental floss, for example, was an inventor, but the man or woman who put it inside that clever little plastic box that lets you tear off just the right length, that was a designer. Now, how does the process of designing a better product work? And would it be interesting to watch that process? When we first broadcast this program back in February, we weren't at all sure what you would think, but 
Judging by the number of you who ordered video cassettes of the program and the number of people who contacted the industrial product design firm that is featured in this program, you liked it a lot. Here was the premise of the program. We went to IDEO, the product design folk, and said, take something old and familiar, like say the shopping cart, and completely redesign it for us in just five days. ABC News correspondent Jack Smith tells us what happened next. Nine in the morning, day one, and these people have a deadline to meet. So welcome to the kickoff of the shopping cart project. This is Palo Alto, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. These are designers at IDEO, probably the most influential product development firm in the world. Designers are the reason TVs have square screens, chairs, four legs, and toothbrushes nowadays, those squishy handles. In fact, it was IDEO that designed those squishy handles. IDEO has designed everything from high-tech medical equipment, the 25-foot mechanical whale in the movie Free Willy, and the first computer mouse for Apple. Smith ski goggles, Nike sunglasses, NEC computer screens. Hundreds of products we take for granted. This is uh, called the Meat Squeeze, squeeze Tube. Uh, toothpaste tube, which you were done. The man who runs IDEO is Dave Kelly, a Stanford engineering professor with a groucho Marx mustache, a data genius, and an approach to innovation that usually works. Well, thank you, Fred. But not always. I can show you some products that failed. Came up with this idea called Monster Shoes, where you take these little monsters and lace them into your shoes, like this. And we built a bunch of them. And, um, I didn't want those either. So. Mostly what IDEO designs, though, does work, and it works very well. Dave and his design teams create about 90 new products every year. The point is that we're not actually experts at any given area. You know, we're kind of experts on the process of how you design stuff. So we don't care if you give us a toothbrush, a toothpaste tube, a tractor, a space shuttle, you know, a chair. It's all the same to us. We, like, want to figure out how to innovate in in, by using our process, applying it. And so for the next five days, the team will apply that process to bring in the supermarket shopping cart into the 21st century. Uh, I think first we should maybe all acknowledge that it's kind of insane to do an entire, an entire project in a week. Project leader is Peter Skillman, a 35-year-old Stanford engineer. Project leader because he's good with groups, not because of seniority. He's only been at IDEO for six years. The rest of the team is eclectic, but that's typical here. Whitney Mortimer, Harvard MBA. Peter Coughlin, linguist. Tom Kelly, Dave's brother, marketing expert. Jane Fulton Suri, psychologist. Alex Kazax, 26, a biology major, who's turned down medical school three times because he's having too much fun at IDEO. He's climbing up and doing this. Oh, it <laughs> Safety emerges early as an important issue. 22,000 child injuries a year. Which is, and so they're hospitalized injuries. I mean, there, there are many others. That's um, reported in the store. That's the actual. No, 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 no that's hospitalized. Wow. Right. And theft. It turns out a lot of carts are stolen. You know, what is the average life of a cart? Does it last two years, five years, ten years? And how big is this theft thing? 10 a.m. As the team works, it becomes clear there are no titles here, no permanent assignments. The other side says, it gives a lot of help, says, be safe. <laughs> Everyone appears to be equal, and they love to mock corporate America. I'll give you status. I'll give you a big red ball on a on a on a on a post, and that says you're a big guy. If you got a ball, you're senior vice president. You know what do I get? The desk, the red ball. It's all the same. <laughs> In a very innovative culture, you can't have a kind of hierarchy of here's the boss and the next person down, the next person down, the next person down, because it's impossible that the boss is the one who's had the insightful experience with shopping carts. It's just not possible. According to Kelly, even employees who merely listen to the boss don't add that much either. So you gotta hire people who don't listen to you, and that I don't think corporate America wants to hear that right yet. I think we ought to start making those lists about the kind of choices that we're going to have. The team splits into groups to find out firsthand what the people who use, make, and repair shopping carts really think. Okay, go. The problem with the plastic cart is the wind catches it. Yeah. And these things have been uh, clocked at 35 across the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's actually a pretty good point. The, the trick is to find these real experts and so that you can learn much more quickly than you could by just kind of doing it in a normal way. 